What's up guys? It's Yuda here for BitLab Academy and we're gonna continue and talking about Ableton Live preferences and today we're gonna talk about the record, record warp launch tab which is uh, pretty big a lot of options here to improve your workflow and also for uh, live performance so let's get to it. So first is the record section uh, you can choose which file type Ableton is going to use to record new files. Um, you can choose between WAVE and AIFF if you're on a Mac. I would recommend keeping it WAVE just for compatibility um, reasons. Next is the bit depth. Uh, what's the bit depth of the newly recorded files? Uh, you can go even larger than 24. Uh, also, the files are going to be larger. Um, 16, if you uh, want to keep it uh, small files, 16 is fine. I think 24 is a good uh, compromise in the middle. So that means that, for example, right now I have an audio clip here. We can see here it's 32-bit. And if I'm going to open up a new audio track, open up the inputs, outputs, and I'm going to tell it audio from my second audio track, record enable, and if I record it, now it's going to be 24. And of course, you can also change the sample rate, and that's under the audio tab. Right here, you can change the sample rate. Nice. Next is the counting. So um, when you start, when you hit record, how much counting is going to give you before the recording is actually going to start. You can set it up from here, one, two, or four bars, but you can also set it up from right here next to the metronome. You have this arrow, the drop down menu. You can set up counting. Same thing. Next is the arm or solo exclusive. So by default, when I arm a track, it's going to be exclusive. All the other tracks that were armed are going to be disarmed. Um, you can turn off the arm exclusive, which by the way, you can also do by just right clicking on one of the arm buttons, arm exclusive right here. So when it's off, that means uh, that all the tracks are basically going to be toggles for the arming, which is great. If you're uh, using multiple MIDI controllers, or if you want to arm uh, a few tracks together, and if the arm exclusive is on, I just want to mention that you can arm it, and then you can temporarily bypass the exclusive by holding Command or Control if you're on a PC. Nice. Same thing for solo. Solo right now, if you solo a track, you're only going to have one track solo, then the other ones are going to be uh, muted. Uh, you can hold command to temporarily bypass that or you can turn off uh, solo exclusive clip update rate uh, let's take it down for a second just to see what it does so this is how often ableton updates the settings of the clip so for example i'm going to play this uh, drum loop and i'm going to play around with the transposition right here and we're going to record this loop to the arrangement using the global record button so I'm going to uh, arm it, and let's play it, a change. Okay, now let's go to the arrangement. And we can see it only updated the clip every quarter note, every beat in this case. Uh, here I have two because I didn't uh, move it in time, but here it's only a quarter note. Now if I go back to the preferences, and I'm going to change the clip update rate to let's say 30 second notes. I'm going to do this again. Let's uh, record, global record, play it. And let's check it now. Now, as you can see, uh, the clips has updated uh, much quicker. So uh, this is the clip update rate. How often does it update the settings of the clip? Next, record session automation in all tracks or arm tracks. I have it on all tracks. That means that if I'm in the session, and uh, let's say, let's bring here, uh, let's reset the transposition first, delete. Um, and I'm going to go and load an effect here. Let's say auto filter. Here I have just some chords here. Let's plunge them. And I'm also, I can automate these ones. So what the right now is set up to record session automations in all tracks. That means I don't have to need to have any track armed. I can uh, enable the session recording, start the project, do some automations. We can see the red dot indicating we have automation. We can even go and look at them in the clip view. 
the clip envelopes. Excellent. Um, if the record session automation is set to arm tracks, you, have to, you need to have the track armed and only that track can be automated at the time. Um, so I have it on all tracks, that's what I prefer, but that's what it does. Start playback with record. So mine is set to off, by default it's on. That means that if you hit any one of the record buttons like the session record or the global record, it's gonna start recording. It's already gonna start recording, okay? Or uh, enable the counting, okay? Um, if it's off, this basically acts as an arm. I'm arming the recording and now I can start my, uh, my recording using uh, the play. And I prefer it like that, so I'm going to turn it off. Next is the warp fade section. Um, loop warp search samples. It's set to automatic, so you basically let Ableton guess if the sample is long enough, um, so it's worth to warp it. Or you can just tell it warp only loops, warp one shots as well, or unwarp one shots. I keep it on auto, let Ableton decide. Underneath that is auto warp long samples. Uh, if you bring uh, long samples like full songs, Ableton is gonna assume you wanna warp them, you wanna play them in time. It's on by default. Um, if you're um, bringing a lot of full songs or long audio material that is hard to warp, meaning you probably have to warp it manually, you might wanna turn it off. But if you're bringing a lot of uh, EDM music, music that is very, um, quantized, very on the grid, uh, usually Ableton gets the warp in pretty accurate, so you can keep it on. Default warp mode. So this is when you bring in an audio clip, let's bring in a new one, whatever, it doesn't matter. Right here, it's already, the warp is on, let's close the clip envelope. The warp is on, and as you can see, I have my default warp mode on complex. I like to use complex first, I can change it from here if I need to. By default, it's on beats. So if you want, you can change the default warp mode. Next, uh, create fades on clip edges. Uh, this is quite important. So it is on See? by default. Let me show you. We have a tiny does. bit of a fade in the beginning, and we're also gonna have a fade out. If you're in, if you're in the session view, and you're gonna bring a, f a new audio clip, this fade right here is gonna be turned on by default, meaning that it's gonna create a fade in, a very short fade in, about four milliseconds, fade in and fade out for your clip, which for me, I'm gonna turn it off by default, especially if you're sequencing in the arrangement view uh, using one shot. So you're only using audio clips, using like just a kick, just a snare here for your audio clips. Uh, make sure you turn this off. It's gonna create automatic fade-ins and fade-outs on your clips, basically to eliminate any clicks in the beginning and the end of the clips. But I prefer to turn it off. Okay, um, launch. So default launch mode. Uh, it's set to trigger by default. And what it is, this is mostly for the session view. So if I'm gonna click this on this clip, and I'm gonna go uh, to the launch box, let's open the launch box, and here we have launch mode, we have four of them. By default it's trigger, basically means when you launch a clip, it's gonna trigger it, and when you launch it, when you click the launch button again, it's going to reset it, it's going to uh, bring it back to the beginning. So I'm gonna click it again. Nice, and it reset it, let me also, delete the filter here. <laughs> Gate mode, um, it's going to launch the clip when you hit it, and as long as you hold your mouse or the keyboard or MIDI map that you map to the launch button, uh, it's gonna keep playing the clip. As soon as you let it go, it's going to launch the stop button, okay? So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna hold it, let it go, the stop button is being launched, and it stopped according to the global quantization engine. Nice. Next is the toggle. You launch it once, it's launch. You launch it again, launching the stop button. Launched, let's launch it. Launch it again. We can see the stop button is being launched. And finally is the repeat. It's going to repeat, uh, resetting the, the clip uh, according to the global quantization engine. 
So if I hold it, it's going to um, play the only one bar out of the loop. Okay? And of course, if you have something shorter here, like 16, holding it, letting go, continue to play. Nice. So that's the launch mode. By default, it's on trigger. Next is the default launch quantization. Um, so this is for individual clips. Although we have the global quantization engine right here, also for each clip, we have its own quantization, which by default set to global. It follows the global quantization, but for each clip, you can set up a different quantization. Uh, also very useful in co um, if you use the launch, different launch modes, you can change the different quantization for each clip. Nice. Select on launch. Let's turn it on. That means that if I launch a clip, let's say this MIDI, it's going to focus on this MIDI clip. Launch this, this clip, it's focus on this clip. Okay, and if the launch, uh, select on launch is off, launching a clip doesn't do anything, just launch it. So I like that option. Uh, select next scene on launch, it's on right now. So I'm gonna keyboard map my scene launch. Let's uh, do number one. So that means when I launch a scene, it's automatically gonna focus on the next thing already. So I'm launching the first scene, jump to the next one, launching that one, jump to the next one, and so on and so forth. <coughs> Excellent. Um, start recording on scene launch. Let's turn it on. So that's if you have a track armed, and now I'm going to launch a scene, it's also going to record on the armed track. If this is off, start recording on scene launch. Doesn't matter that the track is armed. It's not going to record. And lastly, start playback with tap tempo. For me, it's off. That means that right now, if I start tapping the tempo, I'm not going to do anything, just uh, guess the BPM. But if it's on, After four clicks, after four taps, it's going to start the project. Okay, we can see right here. Um, so that's your preference, whatever you decide. Excellent. So that's the Record Warp Launch tab. Uh, a lot of useful features here. Next time we'll cover the CPU tab. Catch you next time.